Hey Bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are making a gorgeous oatmeal and milk after shower oil. So pretty similar to, you know, like a body oil, but better. So the main thing that makes this product better than just sort of plain oil on your skin is that I've included some emulsifiers. So when you apply it to damp skin, it self emulsifies with the water on your skin and turns into lotion on your skin, which is gorgeous. So those emulsifiers we're using BTMS 50, which is conditioning and leaves your skin just feeling incredible. And then we are also using some all of M 300, which is sort of a water soluble version of olive oil that helps again, everything emulsify nicely. They both have really nice skin feels. So some solubilizers like polysorbate 80, I know are more common and uh, more like easily available. However, definitely kind of have a less desirable skin feel. It can be quite tacky. So I don't recommend substituting that out here. Something else I've included, knowing that this product will be applied to damp skin, is some powdered milk and some colloidal oats. So these things are uh, water soluble and typically including them in large amounts in products is not advisable because they're pretty much impossible to preserve in the presence of water. So if we incorporate them into an anhydrous product and then add the water at the instant of use, we can incorporate them and we don't have to worry about shelf stability, which is pretty darn cool. Um, because of the presence of these powders in this oil, you're really going to want to make sure you do apply it to damp skin because you want some water in there for those powders to dissolve into. Otherwise, the powder, like they, they feel gritty, right? Like they're just sitting in them. Yeah. So you definitely want to apply it to damp skin, but you get to have the benefits of these gorgeous ingredients without worrying about them going all nasty on you. I'm also working with a new ingredient in uh, for the shower oil, and this is TKB Trading's Gel Maker CC. And so usually if you put powders in oil, they settle out and then you have to shake before use. And if it's been a while, they could really settle out and then you can really, really, really have to shake before use. But using this gel maker, you don't have to, which is pretty darn cool. Um, you can see by the little bubble that moves that this is not like an overly viscous product at all, but the powders, they stay in suspension, which is great. Um, such a fun little add in that I think is about 6% keeps everything all properly distributed. If you don't have it, please click through to the blog for information on sort of substitutions and alternatives, but this is a pretty cool, pretty cool product. And I'm, I'm excited to share it with you. <laughs> Something worth noting about the gel maker is that it is sensitive to being overheated. We are microwaving it here, which is uh, not outright recommended, but at 6%, it is insulated by a lot of the other ingredients. And we're just doing a very, very little bit to melt the BTMS 50 because I find for me, it doesn't melt in a water bath. If BTMS 50 melts in water baths for you, more power to you, do it in a water bath. But we're just using two little short bursts in the microwave to get that BTMS 50 to melt. And I haven't found that damages the product at all. It still works perfectly fine. So yeah, just be careful. Don't light it on fire. <laughs> Our essential oil blend is a simple combination of vanilla-like benzoin, lavender, and dark patchouli, but you are more than welcome to use anything that your heart desires or loves, anything that you would like to smell like after you take a shower. If you have any questions about substitutions, alternatives, scaling, shelf life, where to buy ingredients, go down to the description box below and please click through to this post on my blog where I have everything written out with lots of links and helpful information. It's taking me about 10 days to reply to blog comments and um, YouTube comments at this point in time. So it's very much worth a click to see if you can get your answer in about 10 seconds instead of about 10 days. But yeah, thanks so much. Let's go make ourselves some after shower oil. The first thing we're going to do is blend together our powdered ingredients in our DIY only coffee grinder. So in here we have one and a half grams of coconut milk powder and two and a half grams of colloidal oats. Now to grind them together, I'm going to pop a sheet of cling film over the top of our grinder and then push the lid down and blend them for a good 20 to 30 seconds. So I'm gonna leave that there to settle down and we're going to start working with some of our other ingredients. So in this beaker, I have three grams of TKB Trading's gel maker. You can see it's kind of a, a thick, viscous thing and we're going to start gradually working in our liquid ingredients. So in this little bowl, I have seven and a half grams of all of them 300. So I'm gonna put a wee bit in and we're gonna start blending it in to the gel maker, kind of breaking it up 
and incorporating it. So this is kind of similar to like if you were making a cornstarch slurry where you want to start incorporating a small amount of liquid so that you can really break up and incorporate the gel maker before you add any more. I found that this is a good point in time to start to incorporate our powdered ingredients as well. So now that they've had some time to settle, we're going to add those. Once you've got a relatively smooth mixture, we can add the rest of our heated phase ingredients. So you're gonna need 20 grams of apricot kernel oil, 13.25 grams of meadow foam seed oil, and one and a half grams of BTMS 50. To melt this through, I'm just going to use the microwave in short sort of 10 to 20 second bursts. I have a really hard time getting BTMS 50 to melt in a water bath. So rather than put it in a water bath and then uh, put it in the microwave afterwards, I'm just going to start with the microwave. So make sure you're doing quite short bursts so that you don't uh, burn anything. So two 15 second bursts later and we are all melted. Another reason to be quite careful with the amount of heat you apply to this is that the gel maker is heat sensitive. So you don't want to be uh, getting this any hotter than absolutely necessary just to get everything um, to melt. So now now we need to let it cool. So you can use an ice bath to speed this up or you can just kind of leave it, that's up to you. I'm going to use an ice bath to speed things along. So just kind of pop your cup in some cold water with some ice cubes and stir away. Make sure you're scraping down the sides as um, that's, those are the parts that are going to sort of thicken and cool the fastest, the bits that are you know, the closest to the cold water. All right, so that's pretty much cool. You can see it's got a bit of viscosity going there. It will continue to thicken up a little bit, um, but I think we're, we're probably like 80, 90% there. And we can now add some of our cool down ingredients. The first thing we're going to add is vitamin E. And I'm actually not going to tear the scale here because we need such a small amount of it, just a quarter of a gram. I find that those first couple decimal points can take, uh, like they don't really register on a scale like this. It'll kind of start at, it'll go 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.3. It's like, oh, crap. <laughs> so we're going to start here with a full weight and we're aiming for, I guess, 188.5-ish since we don't have another decimal point here. For essential oils, I'm going to do a blend of vanilla-like benzoin, lavender, and just a touch of dark patchouli. Sort of forgot about how much I love patchouli and then recently was reminded and thought, oh, I should definitely incorporate some of that. So we need a total of half a gram of essential oils. So I'm going to aim for about 0 0.4 grams of benzoin, 0.1 grams of lavender, and just one drop of dark patchouli. And I'm going to use the same sort of trick with not tearing the scale for these small amounts. Beauty, now all that's left is to bottle it. So we've got about 60 milliliters of product here, so a 60 milliliter or two ounce bottle will be a great fit. I'm going to use two of these cute little bottles so that I can gift some of this since I make way more than I can use, but I also still want to keep some. And I just wanted to show you how it works if you have damp skin. So say you know you've just gotten out of the, the shower and you've got some wet skin here, and then you'll take a little bit of the oil here. and it self emulsifies with the dampness on your hands and basically turns into lotion on your skin and leaves your skin feeling absolutely amazing. And the powdered oats and coconut milk just dissolve with the water on your skin. So this is definitely designed for wet application. It wouldn't be a great experience on dry skin because the, um, <laughs> the powders are definitely <laughs> um, kind of gritty if they don't have any water to dissolve into. And then if you want to as well, you can use it as a shower oil. So you can see that it, or sorry, as a bath oil. <laughs> um, so you can see that it emulsifies into 
your bath water nicely and just makes it kind of milky and smells nice and yeah a nice lovely treat so yeah that's how that works and there you go you just made some oatmeal and milk after shower oil thank you so much for watching please subscribe and do remember to go down to the description box below and click through to find this post on the blog where you'll find a lot more information on things like scaling where to buy ingredients substitutions and shelf life thanks again and i'll see you next time